Today we're going to take a closer look at one of the coolest e-bikes I've seen because it looks like a motorcycle, but it's got pedals, and it's the Hauke Rhino. We're going to take it for a spin in the city and play with it off-road too as we dive into all of the nitty gritty details that you need to know. But first, let's jump into how easy the assembly process is once it arrives at your door. After cracking the box open, you'll see that they've packaged this thing well enough to where it can take a pretty good beat during the whole shipping process. Then after you pull it out of the box and check out the detailed instructions, you'll see that there really isn't that much to install before you're riding. All you've got to do is mount the front wheel, which is as easy as can be, and then we move over to the handlebar setup that again is super simple with only four bolts, followed up by the headlight assembly that mounts to the fork with a couple of screws, and right below it we've got to throw the front fender on, and last but not least we've got the thread on the pedals before we crank them down, and then you're ready to ride. Now that we've got her assembled and ready to rip, let's dive into some of the details and specs on this bike before we get into my thoughts on what it's like to ride it. First off, we've got the bike's frame, which doesn't have a party trick up its sleeve when it comes to folding, like some of the other electric bikes we've reviewed, but this one makes up for it in other areas and in cool points too. It's made from 6061 aluminum to try and help keep the weight down, but she does tip the scales at 83 pounds, so she's not the lightest in the world, but it does have one of the highest weight capacities out of the bikes I've covered at 400 pounds. And when it comes to the seat height, you're looking at about 32 inches, but the real beauty here is that you don't have the typical bicycle seat to bring you discomfort, but you've got this nice and long seat so you can slide around to find the position that's most comfortable for you. And speaking of comfort, let's move over to what's attached to the front of that frame with this front suspension setup that is light years ahead of the front forks on the last two e-bikes I've covered with not only adjustments for preload, but compression too. So you can fine tune it to your riding style and the terrain you'll be hitting to help make the most out of the 5.3 inches of suspension travel that you've got to work with. While out back, it's a hard tail, so no suspension to soak up the bumps, but that's where these fat tires come into play to really help soak up the rough terrain. And even though you've got these 4 inch wide and 20 inch tall knobby tires that look like they're just made for trekking off road, you can't tell when you're on pavement as they are as smooth as can be while giving you confidence to head off the beaten path and go just about anywhere. However, wheels and tires aren't really that important if you can't stop them and that brings us over to the brakes which are a big thing for me as I've always jumped through the hoops to upgrade the brakes on my bikes in the past. But that isn't needed here as these are leaps and bounds better than the brakes on the bicycles I've tested so far thanks to them being hydraulic and not mechanical with them sporting a set of 160 millimeter brake rotors on both ends and hands down it has some of the best levers I've felt so far as they didn't just feel like cheap plastic like some of them out there. Long story short though, the overall braking system on this bike is one of the standout highlights for me next to the overall handling. Now let's get into one of the most important things about this bike and that's the electronics behind it all. First up is what's making it go, and that's the 1000 watt brushless rear hub motor that helps it pump out a healthy 96 newton meters of torque and helps propel you to a max speed of 28 miles per hour, which is more than enough to rip around town and keep up with traffic in a downtown setting if you wanted to venture off the sidewalk and normal bicycle lanes. I'm not saying you should, but it's possible, and you have multiple ways to control the motor's power, but we'll dive into that shortly. To supply that motor with power, you've got a 52 volt, 26.1 amp hour lithium ion battery that can be left on the bike to charge or removed by simply turning your key to unlock and giving it a gentle nudge forward before you lift it off. And that battery paired up with this motor gives you an estimated range of 60 to 90 miles depending on how much pedal assist you're using but again we'll dive more into that shortly so now that we've got the battery and motor out of the way we need to talk about what's working with them to drive the wheels we talked about earlier and that brings us over to the handlebars with this 27 and a half inch wide and 32 millimeter thick bar setup and those bars paired up with the overall seating position really make this thing feel like a motorcycle 
motorcycle instead of your normal bicycle, which is a huge bonus for me as I ride a lot more motorcycles than I do bicycles. On those bars, you can easily control the Shimano 7-speed derailleur by your right hand, and so far this setup has been extremely smooth in its operation, whether I'm playing on the pavement or off-road, and keep in mind, picking the proper gear, just like in a car, can affect your overall range significantly. And speaking of range, you may have noticed that the right grip looks a little different from the left. Well, unlike some e-bikes with a thumb throttle, this bike has a twist throttle. So if you're in the mood to be a little lazy and don't want to pedal, just roll the throttle back like a motorcycle and you're off. Now we've got to have a way to control the motor on this electric bicycle and that's where the display comes into play. Where you've got a four inch LCD display that helps you keep tabs on all of the information you need to know with a speedometer, odometer, trip meter, pedal assist levels, and so on. Now you may be asking, pedal assist modes? What are those? Well, you've got an option to just pedal the bike if you like, like a normal bicycle, but... Why would I do that? And for those that would like some assistance from the electric motor, you've got pedal assist modes one through five, and with each bump up, it steadily increases how much it assists you while pedaling and the overall speeds you're going to hit, even if you're not pedaling the bike. And here's what you can expect when it comes to speeds out of each mode. Plus, you also have a walking mode if you don't feel like pushing an 80 pound bike by simply pressing and holding the down button. Now, with all of that being said, what does someone that normally rides motorcycles but has recently started to dip his toes in the whole electric bicycle and motorcycle world have to think about this new e-bike from Hauke? Well, so far, I'm loving it. And for me, it's a lot more fun to rip around on when compared to the e-bikes I've tested so far. Why? Well, we've already covered in the past about how I enjoy the ability to take these things just about anywhere, and nobody ever bats an eye because it's technically a bicycle. But what I really like about this one is the overall rider's triangle and seat setup as I feel a lot more at home, so to say, naturally due to my history with motorcycles. And this thing is pretty peppy for what it is, obviously being quicker than the 500 and 750 watt bikes I've tested, which definitely adds a bit of fun factor there, while also making it more suitable for certain conditions, depending on where you'll be riding. Plus, if you like attention, this bike will bring you plenty of it. I couldn't tell you how many times I had people stop and ask me what it is and how cool it looked while I was out and about filming. And while it may not be as easy to tote around like some other e-bikes out there, since it doesn't fold, all you need is a simple bicycle rack and this hitch mounted setup from Hauke has been a lifesaver for me so I don't have to constantly break out my trailer every time I want to head out for a ride. I've never used one of these before though and I kept telling myself there's no way it stays secured but knock on wood I've ran all over town and it's been awesome so far while not being as expensive as some other options out there. That's only a small sample of this bike though and I'll have more videos coming in the future as we put more and more miles on it to see what it's like in a long term scenario. But I gotta say, this bike has delivered on everything they advertise so far when it comes to range, charge times, and so on with no issues to date. Again, knock on wood. And if you're interested in more information and or possibly purchasing one of these, I'll have links below and they do help support what I'm doing here on the channel at no extra cost to you, so please check them out. That's enough rambling from me though. What do you guys think about this bike? These videos aren't just for me to ramble on, so let's talk about it all down in the comments section and if you've got any questions, just let me know. And on that note, thanks for watching and a big thank you to our channel members and Patreons for helping to keep this train chugging along and we'll see you guys in the next one.